right. We're waiting on everybody to come on in because we're doing the late night tap in. We're doing the late, late night tap in. What's up, man? How y'all doing? What's going on with the fam? Waiting on everybody to pile on through on this lovely Saturday evening. How's everybody doing? I'm here. What's up, D. Tubman? What's going on, man? I haven't done a live in a few days, man, but I'm here. I've been so busy working on the new hip-hop documentary. We're getting that together and just been grinding very hard on that, getting that ready for the family. I'm very excited about that, very passionate about it. So we're um, pretty much in the editing stages now. We've done with all the principal photography. Well, no, no, I, I do have to shoot some more scenes. I got to shoot my scenes. So we do have to shoot some more stuff, but we're editing in the middle. So that's coming. We're going to have a trailer for that probably in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have the first look trailer for the new documentary probably in a couple of weeks. So you guys stay tuned. This is going to be a very powerful piece. This documentary, a lot of people are already triggered by it. A lot of people are very nervous about what we're going to talk about. A lot of people are already complaining. You have a lot of people hopping in our comment sections, whining about the movie already. And they don't even know what all's being said. They just know that the truth is about to be revealed. And you got people copping, please. That's how powerful, you know it's going to be powerful if people are already shaking in their damn boots. And you don't even know what's, what we're talking about. People don't even know. We haven't even put the trailer out. We haven't even put the name of the movie out. And people are nervous about this movie coming out already. People are all up in the comments. Nigga, why are you being divisive with this movie? I feel the movie will be divisive. Why, why y'all talking like that? Because y'all know the truth is about to come out. You know the truth is going to come out. When people build a reputation or try to build a status off lying, and then all you say is, I'm going to bring the truth out, they get nervous and offended, and they start doing a lot of projecting. So y'all know a lot of these lies that's being thrown out here. That's we 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 wiping the floor with that shit. Yeah, yeah, the lies are gonna stop, and y'all know it. Y'all know the gravy train from lying is about to come to a screech. That's about to be over, and y'all should want the truth. You should want the truth to be out there. You know, why, why would you want to just sit up and, and be known for being a, a lying scammer and just having a, a culture of lying? And <clears throat> when it comes to the history of hip hop, there's been way too many lies out here. Way too many lies, way too many scams. And, you know, we, we just got to set the record straight and we are setting the record straight. We go very deep in this movie. It's a very deep movie, man. You guys are going to really, really love it. And it's going to be a historic game changer. So you guys stay tuned. You already know what it is. You stay tuned. The first look trailer will be coming in a couple of weeks. Sure. So this is going to be a major one for the archives. And this is this one is going to be taught in schools. You're not going to have a hip hop conversation without referencing this movie because the first time that this movie has just set everything straight with all of the pioneers. That's the key thing. But I digress. You already know how we do. I hope everybody um, is having a good weekend so far. Shout out to our brother Dion Sanders doing his thing out there in Colorado. Dion is shining, and I knew our brother would, would be on top of his game and bring the school on top of their game. Um, months ago when people were trying to doubt our brother and they were criticizing him for leaving the HBCU. I said, no, no, let our brother cook. He, he's going to do what he's supposed to do. He did what he's supposed to do with the HBCU and he's about to take the game to another level. So Dion is single-handedly, you know, making college football shit. He's making that hotter 
as hot as the damn NFL at this point. He's making the shit hot. You know, the, he got the whole country excited about what's going on out there in Colorado. Colorado is now the epicenter. You know, that's ground zero for college football now. You know, and Dion is doing that, and he, he's going to make it hotter. When is the next? The next game is um, they're playing the other Colorado team next week, if I'm not mistaken, right? So then they, they're getting it turned up, man, and I love it. And let me tell you something. These white commentators, boy, they low key, they can't stand Dion. You know this low key, they're salty as hell. Do y'all know just low key how much they wanted Dion to fail? They wanted Dion to fail. You, you dig? These people are very passive aggressive when it comes to Dion. They know he makes the game hot, he shines and you know, to let me. It was one um, commentator. Uh, he was up there with Stephen A. Smith. He was talking about, well, yeah, I'm gonna root for Nebraska, yeah, because I'm Dion out. Yeah, they they can't even hide their contempt. <clears throat> they can't hide their contempt. Um, to them, Dion, and they'll they'll try to smile through it, but to them, Dion is the uppity Negro. He's the uppity Negro, and they hate an uppity Negro. When somebody comes in the room with confidence and tells you what he's going to do, and then he does it, oh, they hate an uppity Negro. And also, they were talking about, well, Dion makes everything about him. I heard some of these white commentators say that. He makes it all. It shouldn't be about the coach. It should be about the players and the school. Dion just makes everything about him. The focal point should be the coach. These people can go to hell with that. Because white coaches who win, they treat them like damn Jesus. When there's a white coach that has a winning streak, I do they literally treat them like some kind of holy, divine, spiritual being. I remember, look, I, remember, I, I grew up down in Alabama. And there was a white coach, Coach Bear Bryant. And he was like the winningest coach of college football or whatever. I don't know whatever the stats was, but he won a lot of games. Coach Bear Bryant. Nigga, white people would have pictures of him next to Jesus in their homes out there. And I'm not exaggerating. There would be a picture of Bear Bryant and a picture of Jesus. I remember that growing up out there in Alabama. And when this dude died, and I talk about this in my book, when Bear Bryant died, 80s, early 80s, uh, what what the hell year was it? It was early 80s when he died. I remember being in elementary school and we came in and they gave an announcement that this motherfucker died like JFK got shot or something. Yes, yeah, so we have sad news. Yeah, Coach Bear Bryant died and we're going to have a moment of prayer. We sat up in there praying for a damn college football coach who died, who was a hundred and a gazillion years old. I don't know. He was all he was old as hell. So he just died of natural causes. It wasn't nothing. He didn't get in an accident. So we're sitting up, and I, I, I never forget this because I'm like, I don't give a fuck about. I don't care about this guy. Why are we sitting here praying for a damn football coach? Yeah, but that's how serious they take them white coaches if they win. The, they're the gods of earth you dig when it's when they're white and they win boy they put the coach on the Wheaties boxes they they big them up big time but when it's a black coach winning and putting in some work and shining oh god he tone it down i'm dion out oh god i'm so dion out it's just too much of this negro Oh, he, he's his grinning teeth and just it's about the players. Shut up. Shut the hell up and keep shining, Dion. I love what you're doing, brother. Keep doing what you do. Being great. Fully support our brother. Man, it's a lot of y'all in here tonight. We're going to take calls in a minute. Y'all see, I posted a clip. There's this thing on TikTok, and, and I hate to, to go in on the tether class, 
But the tethers are always, speaking of icons, TikTok has a thing where you have these non-FBA tethers always making these little disrespectful monologues about our FBA icons. These folks get on TikTok and just make it a point to denigrate Malcolm X. Um, some people, they've denigrated Harriet Tubman. They'll denigrate Dr. King. This um, A couple of tethers, and, and I posted some of the videos, and there's one woman talking about how Malcolm X, who was reading his autobiography, and there was a, a part in there where when Malcolm X was still Detroit Red, he was in the streets, his homeboy had a chick and the chick tried to rush him and Malcolm kind of he put hands on her to kind of back her up off of him. So the woman read that passage and tried to paint a, a misogynistic narrative. Well, Malcolm was misogynistic. Oh my God. How can we follow the misogyny? Yeah, shit, man. Then these people be running around here talking about Malcolm X was LGBT and and then some other tethers was running around here talking about Martin Luther King was homophobic because he stopped rocking with Bayard Rustin. Yeah, how, MLK was so homophobic. How are we going to idolize him? That type of stuff. And it's always tethers doing that. And, and as far as Bayard Rustin, yeah, Dr. King stopped rocking with him. Bayard Rustin was an damn asset for the CIA and the FBI. Yeah, I guess they realized that. They should have been stopped messing with Bayard Rustin. He was a damn, he was an op. Y'all Google that. Bayard Rustin was, a, was an asset for the uh, the CIA and the FBI. Yeah, so he wasn't, Bayard Rustin wasn't the dude at all to sit here and idolize. There's another thing. They're trying to create these LGBT icons they're trying to find anybody who rubbed somebody's bussy back in the day and try to prop them up as if they're some kind of icon. And if we didn't accept them, we're uh, this blanket homophobia. And they, they're rewriting history big time. But Bayard Rustin was, you know, he was a, that dude was an op. But I digress. But but again, with the, the tether class doing this thing where they denigrate our icons and it's always the tether class. You don't see FBAs doing that. And a lot of that, where they have to denigrate our icons, you know, that comes from the fact that many of them, they come from these places where they don't have any national heroes. Like you you want to keep it a buck and just really understand where that contempt comes from? And, you know, who the, the, these some of these female rappers, Nicki Minaj and all these people, they do that shit too. And I've talked about that before. You know, Nicki Minaj said some little slick stuff about Rosa Parks, act like Rosa Parks and get your ass up. You know, little disrespectful ass stuff. They go out of their way to do that. These folks don't have any real national icons in their homeland and in their culture. They don't have it. So because they don't have any to prop up and for us to denigrate, they try to throw stones at ours. They think that they can demonize and try to take our icons down a peg because they don't have any, to be honest. They just don't. So we got to do some straightening when it comes to a lot of this type of cultural disrespect. And this is why we're doing this movie so that folks want want latch on to our culture and then try to claim it and then try to denigrate some of the real icons of the different cultures that we've created and the different movements that we've created. So it's very important for us to start getting the truth out there. And we got a lot of folks in here. What's up, Nikki the God? Wait, first of all, everybody give a birthday shout out to Nikki the God. It's your birthday, isn't it, Nikki? It is Nikki the God's birthday. Shout out to Nikki the God. Everybody give her a black hand. Let me see a black fist. <laughs> give her a birthday shout out or give her a heart or give her something. All right, give her something. It is a birthday. All right. Now, let me get some of the calls in here. We got a lot of, let's get um, Prince Lawrence. 
Then we'll get DJL Beats. All right. And then we'll get 10C. All right. So let's get Prince Lawrence in here. Yes, sir. Jerry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How I'm doing you? wonderful. So I just want to say that I'm actually a college student. I'm a senior uh, going to Charles Drew University of Medicine and Science. And me and my parents have been watching you for about four years now. We really enjoy everything that you do. You're a huge inspiration. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Where are your parents uh, from? So my mom is from Mississippi, Clarksdale, and my dad is from South Carolina. Yes, sir. Love it. So Love I it. actually wanted to drop some ammunition on you for the tethers. It turns out that America is the oldest landmass to ever exist. Without America, absolutely nothing else genetically or culturally could exist. America's crust is... ...years old, and... It was the first to harbor life and everything, not Africa, like the white supremacists have made us believe all this time. America truly is the cradle of civilization everywhere, and it's proven scientifically and historically. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, brother. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Let's get, um, let's get DJ. DJ, hop on, man. Tariq, what's going what's on, brother? How are you? I'm good. So I just want to uh, shout out to Steve and his sister Nikki, uh, the family. I just want to point out something you said about Dion. It's funny now, because um, even with this situation with uh, Mel Tucker that's coming, I don't know if nobody know that. Now that was the most, I think, highest paid black college football coach. Yeah. Like I seen an hour ago, they accusing him of rape. Oh, shit. So it's, yeah, so it's like, it's funny. They don't want that cult, you know, because you know, us being coaches and having any prominence in the culture, they want to tear that down. So now they they they've been knowing this stuff for months, and now they just as soon as he signed a 95 million dollar contract with Michigan State, now they want to say, Oh, he cheated on his wife, he wow. raped a, a woman. They're trying to tear him down at the same time. You got Dion with all this attention, so we just want to cover them, brothers. And I and I want you to kind of look into that. Because he may need you. Well, I don't know if he may need you, but yeah, just to bring light to the subject, and I, I digress. All right, I'm gonna look into that, man. Yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, whenever a uh, brother gets on the come up, or they got to do something to kind of slice him down and, and bring him down a peg, boy, all the time. Let's get ten. Hello. What's up, hey, Tim? What's going on? Thanks for taking my call, brother. I got a quick question for you. Um, I think that you briefly spoke on this uh, last year, but um, with the advent of uh, Twitter spaces, we kind of got on code with um, the FBA movement really blew up. And I just want to ask you, what do you see politically our next move should be? Because, you know, I don't think that the tethers really saw this coming, us delineating the way that we have been doing um, thus far. Yeah. So uh, what do you th what do you think is going to happen within this you know next few years, especially the next political cycle? Um, where do you see? FBA's uh, going from there. Great, great question, man. And right now, um, they're doing a lot of pandering. And what we have to do is just keep on focusing on our culture. We got to understand politics is something you do every day. Politics is warfare without bloodshed. Every day is politics. Everything you do as a cultural group is politics when it comes to empowering yourself. So just the fact that we're looking to our culture and looking at what's best for the people within our culture, that's a political move because it's a psychological warfare move without bloodshed. Every day we should be looking at ways to empower ourselves. Every day we should be looking for ways to connect with other foundational black Americans and then other allies who are really down for the cause to empower and support them. Every day we should be looking at how to protect those within our community. Every day we should be looking at how to strengthen our male-female relationships and by extension, that will strengthen the family relationships with the children because we need that. Every day is politics. For example, I'm out here in California. They just passed a bill now where your children can be taken away from you if you deny or not affirm their quote unquote gender identity. 
us fighting back against that daily is politics. That's a political thing. Everything you do as a group and a culture is politics every single day. And that requires you to be on code with other people within your immediate ethnic group or your power base. And then by extension, your allies, but they have to be genuine allies. But you have to get your center base and your ethnic base strengthen before you can accept any real, real allies. Because what happens is we get other people who come in here who look like us, but they're not real allies. They have another agenda. So the daily politics of strengthening our ethnic group, that's something that's going to be done on a continuous basis. That never stops. And like I said, the Democrats are going to be struggling next year. They're already pandering. Did y'all see Kamala? Kamala has some kind of hip hop party at her house. I'm not exaggerating. I put up the, the link. She's dressed like Mr. Brown from the Tyler Perry movies. She had on these weird colors. That woman cannot dress to save her life. This woman had on some weird colors with some fuchsia, polyester pants, and a Gordon Gartrell shirt with all types of different goddamn colors in it. And she's up here dancing around like somebody's drunk auntie. And... They're, they're dancing to a tribe called Quest. I mean, they're pandering. She gets to pandering. <clears throat> Y'all know it's panda time. When Kamala gets to dancing and shaking them little old narrow hips and flat ass, when she gets to shaking that, it's it's that's the get out the vote movement. I think they they think she's going to seduce niggas. You know, they, they have her go out here and tell her to dress kind of sexy. You know, take that jacket off and, um, you know, let your titties bounce around a little bit and get them niggas aroused. No, ma'am. That doesn't work, ma'am. You're going to make me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote for Ron DeSantis if you do some shit like that. And I can't stand him. So yeah, her seduction tactics ain't working. They're like, Kamala, go on out there and shake some of that ass. That's what those Negroes like. You know, get your booty to the pole. Like, they're like, bitch, you're light skinned. Yeah, you let your hair down a little bit and hide your husband. They always hide Doug. Whatever it's voting time and Kamala's shaking that little narrow ass, they make Doug go somewhere and hide. They no, we can't have the white man around you. We got to have you around a lot of niggas and some barbecue and some collard greens and hot sauce and shaking that ass. You know, that's what niggas like. So that's their get out the vote strategy for us. So that desperate move that they're making is not going to work. It's not working. This is how de they don't have another play. So we have to stay on our square. We have to let her know them hips and them wish outfit jeans and, and pantsuits you're wearing. That's just not going to work for us. We're going to need some tangibles. All right, let's get Somali, Somali and Jera. Puppy Akute Tariq. Uh oh, here we go. What's going on with you, man? So that video recently of the girl who got hit with a brick. We're from the same country. Don't you, right. don't you think foundational black Americans are indirectly or even directly responsible? And I guess you're going to tell me the weak correlation of how we're responsible for something that we were not involved in. But how were we responsible? Because of the culture um, where I'm from, we don't have nightclubs. You know, men don't be hitting women like that. If you don't stop. If you don't stop, dude, y'all be beating the brakes off women. Y'all do forced female circumcisions. Guys, y'all infamous for doing all types of weird stuff to the women over there. That's culturally acceptable. So don't even play that game, sir. Female genital mutilation has since stopped since the 90s. Um, we don't do that no uh, more. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Y'all still do that. It's and in fact, that woman, that's the lady in the video, she said it was going down with her sisters and they were fleeing from Somalia and all those areas. So, yeah, it still goes down. Y'all still do that stuff, sir. So stop. Well, it. sometimes you have to tell a sob story to get in immigration. So I mean, oh. you can't really fault her for that. Oh, so it's all cap. It's it possibly is all cap because that doesn't happen anymore. But why are you nitpicking? You know, because I saw clips of you saying talking about her past and saying all types of stuff that she said. It reminds me of how police talk about black people and black men in particular, when they kill them, they say he had a criminal 
history. So don't you think you're playing the same game? Like, uh, No, because we didn't do anything to the woman. We Foundational Black American men had zero to do with her, zero to do with that situation, and we have zero responsibility. See how that works? Why don't y'all non-FBA people ever take responsibility for the stuff that you do within your communities? The person who hit, hit her is non-Somali. And he's non-FBA. He's an immigrant like you. So that's the immigrant. So you guys share that camaraderie that he comes from an immigrant class. So how come y'all immigrants don't get together and say, hey, what are we doing? From your perspective, you're blaming everybody else. Yes. Who isn't because foundation of Black American. Immigrant. Yes, immigrant groups. But from because my you perspective, guys, I, view you, I, I view you guys as the same. You guys are not. No, you no, no, you guys no, are in the no, same no, boat. You no, you don't. You guys view us different. That's why you have different names for us. Y'all have um, Jareer, Jareer, and uh, yeah, y'all got all y'all. You you view us different. Yes, you do. You do view us different, and we are different. And you come from an immigrant class, you and the suspect and the victim. So you guys should handle that. Y'all should talk amongst yourselves and find out where the violence and all of that, where y'all like to beat up and punch on women and hit them with bricks. And y'all need to figure what, out what's going on and why you like to do that type of stuff. And don't try to bring us into your beefs. But there's some clips going around social media of you talking down on blacks black women and dark skin sir, as well. Sir, no, 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 sir, there are no clips of me talking down on no dark skin woman. And all you're doing is trying to find a way to deflect, sir. Why don't you handle your business as an immigrant and stop your fellow immigrants from hitting women in the head with bricks? We're not to get we're not the same. I don't believe in Patrick yes, yes, as well. We, Y'all do. It's, uh, sir, y'all got to, over there where you're from. There's child slavery, abuse. Y'all beat down on women like crazy. You guys are very violent towards the women over there, and it's culturally acceptable. And there's a reason why people are fleeing from over there all the time. That's not true. So why don't this is very true. Why don't y'all handle that, man? Why don't y'all handle your business? Why do you always keep cherry picking about negative? Stuff that's that not a cherry not pick. Foundational Black American. That's that's you, not a cherry pick. That's not a. That's a major thing. Why don't you so talk you about the bad things you guys you do? Think, you you think you are fleeing in droves from the violence and the degradation in your homeland, sir. That's not cherry picking. That's the norm. Nobody fled from my family. We just came so, here to a better place. It's not called fleeing. Yes, yes it is, sir. To, that is fleeing. Did, Farrakhan, did fled, Farrakhan's family flee? Sir, you fled. You fled. And why are we talking about Minister Farrakhan? Minister Farrakhan, his family is from the Caribbean. Did they flee as well? Or is it just me and my family? Uh, see, well, Minister Farrakhan came over here and became an asset to black America. He brought something to the table other than you guys. You don't bring anything to the table. You come here and take from us and then denigrate us, eat off the table, and you're not an asset to us whatsoever. So you're not comparable, comparable to Minister Farrakhan in any sense of the word. What so. has Farrakhan done for foundational black Americans? Minister Farrakhan has helped so many foundational black Americans with business, education, justice, so many things. He's an inspiration and been an inspiration to foundational black Americans for the last 50 years under the tutelage of um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you guys, sir, y'all come over here and you drive Uber and disrespect us. So you're we're apples and oranges. It's not the same. Is there anything wrong with driving for Uber? You always make not fun of us. One, not one. I, I, I talk about Uber because y'all come over and then you brag about how much better you're doing and y'all start lying about us worrying about you taking our jobs, which we don't because the only jobs you're taking are the Uber jobs and we're not tripping on that. So that's why I bring up Uber all the time. But you're not an asset to us, sir. You don't bring anything to the table to Foundation of Black Americans. When you visited, you're not when you visited Houston, it's my people who drove you around on Uber. I mean... Isn't that a contribution that is worthy of note? Um, no, because I could have gotten anybody to drive me around. Well, we I, didn't have need a brother. Drive, I didn't need you to drive, drive me around. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask some, something else because, you know, besides all this trolling, I wanted to ask, are you going to... Right, well, are you going well, to, you have to well, you have to troll because you can... 
you know you ain't bringing nothing to the table. So trolling is a that's the passive aggressive way to deflect from your failure, sir. I actually failure. have been tuning into you for a few years now. Um, but, you know, if if I'm in agreement with you all of a sudden, then there's no need for a conversation. Right. So I'm trying to you, find a you, way to. What are you in agreement with? I, pr- I pretty much agree with most things that you say. Right. To be honest with you. Right. But 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 i think you feel a certain way about your family fleeing i think that bothers you that we point out because you know you know your family fled and and just admit that just don't try to front it's okay to say hey man we failed back home we came over here because of white shout supremacy. out to the yeah. shout out to the shout out to the foundation of black americans that kind of made a lane for us how okay. hard is that to do it's not hard at all i mean you know I agree with you that Foundation of Black Americans built this country. It wasn't the founding fathers. It wasn't the Native Americans. It wasn't other immigrant groups. We came while this country was already built. And we're thankful for that. But at the same time, I mean, is it really fleeing? I know we went, you know, we came from, you know, poverty. and all right. Okay, I don't want to have the same conversation over and over where you're trying to redefine fleeing. All right, but you know what it is. All we're saying is, hey, you pop your collar a little bit. You know, you can pop that collar. It ain't going to kill you. You know, if, you know you know, we help you out. Do what Minister Farrakhan did. But he became an asset. Him and his family, they became an asset to us. JC, hop on. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, everyone. I just hopped in. I wasn't really listening to what was said previously, but uh, sounds like a good conversation. I do think that the uh, Somali people provide... Um, and contribute to the communities that they live in. Um, and I also wanted to say, make America great again. Everyone needs to vote Trump so we can get sleepy Joe Biden out of office because he has dementia mm-hmm. and his son is a crack addict. Thank you, everyone. There you go. All right. Okay. We had a, a MAGA guy. Okay. All right, let me see who else. We've got a lot of folks in here. Uh, who we got? Okay. Let me see who we got. We got a lot of folks in here. Let's get hip hop news in. Hip hop news. All right. What's up, brother Tariq? This is Major, man. This is my new account, so it hasn't switched over. My main account got suspended by a white supremacist because I called her out. So I'm trying oh, to get damn. my main account back. Uh, so if you could help me, uh, help me get that back, that'd be dope. No doubt, no doubt. So what's on your mind, sir, Major? Not much, man. I, I don't know if you talked about this. I'm a little late uh, in the room. Did you see that second video that came out from 2020 of the girl who claimed that she got smacked in the face? Uh, she yeah. Got, she, oh, so you saw that? Yeah, so oh, she's doing the same thing. Man, it's Isn't a finesse it? game, man. Yeah. Now, yeah, I, did call, yeah, yeah. I did contact HPD, which is the Houston Police Department, to see if they were actually investigating this as, as some type of scam or whatever. And they're real tight-lipped about it. They won't speak on it at all. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, thank you. But yeah, the girl, that that girl is um, up here. Um, she did another video where she was sitting here talking about some other, some dude hit her. This was 2020. Look at my face. A black man hit me. So, okay. What? Well, okay. And then I think she had a GoFundMe page up for that. So this woman seems to have a history of, you know, getting hit or whatever, and then immediately putting up a GoFundMe and getting money for getting hit. So I don't know what's going on with that. It's, it's very interesting. All right, let's get a submarine. Hey, how you doing, man? You good? I'm good. What's up, Submarine? Chilling, man. Uh, quick, just quick question. What are your thoughts on um, Noah Lyle's comments about, like, um, the USA, I mean, sorry, the NBA, like, champions not being world champions and just kind of how that's played out as well with, like, the um, FIBA World Cup stuff? Like, what? I just want to know what your thoughts are personally on that because I don't know that I've heard you comment on that. Uh, yeah, that's something that I don't even know about. That's... You're in the, you must be in the UK. You're in the UK? No, I'm in Canada, actually. Okay, yeah, that's some Canadian shit. I don't know nothing about that. We don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about that. When, where, where are you from? That's a weird accent you have. It's a Canadian slash um, 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 French African type of thing. Where, where are you from? Where's your family from? My family is from Nigeria. Okay, okay. 
Okay, yeah, your accent is very, it, it, it mixed in with that Canadian accent is interesting. But yeah, I don't know too much about that other stuff, though. But thank you, brother. All right. Okay. Yeah, sometimes people call up and they get real random with the questions. All right. Let me see who we got in here. Um, a lot of people in here right now. But we in here heavy. All right, let's get... No, no, this, this is a white supremacist troll. Let's get Trey in here. All right, Trey, hop on, Trey. Trey, what up? What's up, Trey? How are uh, you? Oh, good, man. You know you're one of the goats, man. But, hey, I, I got a question for you. Uh, I got two questions, uh, actually. So my first Go so ahead. my first question is, right, because ever since I heard about the FBA and the delineation, I'm like, this is definitely a strategic move, and it's beneficial yeah. for the Black Black American Collective. So how do you feel about, like, because, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these, because you know how politics work is majority rules, and we really don't have a majority black state, right? So how, how do you feel about, like, honing in on, like, a, these majority black cities and creating, like, a black America town where we control the institutions, the police force, and the economics of these cities like Jackson, Detroit, Birmingham, uh, Miami Gardens, Florida, and Memphis, where we, like, the, and, and Montgomery, where we're easily over 70% of the population there and create like a foundational black, black American towns in these majority uh, black American cities. That's my first question. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good question. And we, we can do that. We just got to get extremely on code and we got to think in terms of protection, um, economic base and political base. When we get these towns, we have to get into the mindset of policing them and protecting these towns. That's been a major problem because a lot of times, going back to the Black Wall Street days, we could get a black town. We can easily do that. We can build it up real fast. The problem is we take the eyes off the ball when it comes to these white supremacists sabotaging it. Because the minute we do anything progressive, they start going into sabotage mode. We always, always, always have to understand that. And what happens is we have to have a network of other black people and a community of us working together to stop that. Unfortunately, what happens is one or two black businesses pop up and before we can get a nice train rolling, the sabotage happens and we don't have the protection we need to stop the sabotaging. Uh, we, we're going through that right now with the Hidden History Museum. They're, they're, we're getting sabotaged like crazy right now um, with the Hidden History Museum. We got it popping. All the earmark grant money, they do not give it to us. And us, we basically keep our lights on and our doors open by having events. And now the LAPD, they're making us get like special permits in order for us to have our live events now. So... And, and now they're just dragging their ass with giving it to us. You know, we had to fill out all these different applications. They saw all of the events we had and then them shits was popping. So now they popped up like, oops, well, if you're going to have another event, there's a certain kind of permit that you got to have. And it has this, 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 this. And now they're literally just dragging their ass, giving it to us. Little stuff like that. They know how to do administrative sabotaging. They start fucking you over with the paperwork. And so we have to have, that's where our black political class comes in to help out with that. Then we have the black protective class that helps out with anything else. Then we have people protect or support everything economically. And we have a network of um, economic centers that we're supporting within the community. So we have to think big in terms like that. That's why I say politics is something you do every day. We Every day, we should be all about networking, building, getting certain people within the political structure who's going to do what we need them to do. This is why they keep bringing tethers to us, the Kamala Harris's and the Obama's, people from different lineages acting as our representative. This is why delineation is very important. We'd, I don't want nobody who's non-FBA acting as our representative. That shit is, that, those days should be over. 
This is why anybody who represents us, we got to check that background. Now, let's be clear. We do have some, there's some FBAs out there who are coons. We have to identify them as well. But damn, the, the, the tether class, they're going to throw them out there first. And when the tether class is out there, we start asking questions. Hey, you got some kind of dual allegiance, so you might not be the best representative for us. So this is why we got to be on code. Because, again, the Somalian guy called up just because a motherfucker is black. That don't mean anything because some of these black skinned people, they don't look at themselves black psychologically. So they'll come around us. We're thinking, hey, we got a lot of numbers. Yeah, we got um, 500,000, quote unquote, black people here. But we don't know if those tethers are down or not. And the tether class then set up their own little economic base separate on the other side of town. You you know what I'm saying? So they're not on code. So it's very important to get with like-minded, codified people who's going to help build an economic base, political base, and a protective base. All right, let's.